Welcome to this week's special episode of The Ark. Okay, so this week we're doing a special episode of The Ark and we're focusing on the Triduum. So today is Holy Thursday and our gospel reading comes from John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Gosh, there is so much that could be discussed in this reading. Jesus, as a faithful Jew, had followed the law and made sure that the Passover meal was set up for his apostles. But if we pay attention, we can see that he didn't finish the meal the way it was described in our first reading today. During supper, during supper, he gets up, dresses more like a servant, and washes his disciples' feet. This was definitely not part of the original custom, and the disciples are surprised and confused. And Peter even asks him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? He protests because this is such an undignified thing to do for someone that is held in high regard like a teacher and a leader. So after Peter accepts this, he then asks Jesus to also wash his head and his hands. But Jesus says, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So here, Jesus is referring to bathed as our baptism, because through baptism, we are washed clean. But we still need to learn how to serve one another. So by doing this very humble servant act, Jesus shows them what he's talking about. He explains, yes, I am the teacher, I am the leader, but think about what I've done here. I have washed your feet to give you this model, to do this for each other. Jesus is never arrogant or trying to throw his power or his title around. And Jesus knows that he's not going to be here much longer, so he's trying to help his apostles learn the way he wants them to lead his church. He says it very clearly. This is a model for us, and we should follow it. So that night at that Passover, Jesus effectively changes it forever because he is the spotless lamb that will be sacrificed once and for all. And just like God gave precise instructions at the original Passover for his people to follow to live, so Jesus gives us new instructions to eat and drink in remembrance of him. He gives us himself in the Eucharist in our Holy Mass. And now by his body and blood, we are saved. And he calls us to serve one another in his love. So let's pause and reflect on this. Hey, what's up, St. Teresa? So on this special edition of The Ark, we're going through the Gospels for the Triduum. So you just heard the Gospel from Amy Aller for Holy Thursday. Now let's get into the Gospel from Good Friday. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. 
So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas' betrayer was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Anas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order to not be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to him, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone, in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king! And they cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. 
So they took Jesus and, carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them. For my vesture, they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Okay, so that was a bit of a long gospel. Um, but, you know, I, I, I feel like I say this every week. And there's so much we could talk about. Uh, but the one I want to focus on is the power of Jesus' word. You know, when the guards and Judas first come to the garden, we read, when we read closely, it says, you know, you know, who are you looking for? Jesus says, who are you looking for? They say, Jesus of Nazareth, or Jesus the Nazarene. And Jesus says, I am. Ego eimi, right, in Greek. And what, what happens? When John literally says, after he said, I am, they all turned and fell. So you have to picture this, right? He spoke the divine name. In Hebrew, it was Yahweh, right? I am who am. And we know, we read from St. Paul, that at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and below the earth will bow and bend. Well, in this passage, that literally happens. At the name of God, at the name of Jesus revealing truly who he is, namely the Son of the Father, his, the power of his word literally knocked them all down. Literally, right? And then they, they eventually kind of stumble back up. And he says, hey, so I'm still here. Who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazarene. He says, I'm he. And I think this is important because we have to realize that Good Friday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, didn't happen outside of the, can Jesus' control. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen to him. He is God. He knew the pain. He allowed it to happen. We also read another, in the same passage, we just skipped it over in today's reading. Jesus telling Pilate, you know, if, if I wanted to, a legion of angels would come and, and rescue me. But he doesn't will that because that's not the will of God. It's not his will. And then finally, when he's on the cross, he is the one that relinquishes his spirit. You know, in the Gospel of John, we read about the resurrection of, of Lazarus. And that event where Jesus weeping and he says, you know, Lazarus, come out. Three words. Well, Jesus could have said, nails, come out. And if nails would have come out, he would have healed completely because he's God. But he chose to remain on the cross for our sins. He chose the cross. So I want you to reflect on this. And you know, now as a family, the power of Jesus, the power of the name of God, choosing suffering for our salvation. And before we go on to this family discussion questions, the next person you're going to see is Father Larry, who's going to be reading from the resurrection account of Jesus, namely on Easter Sunday. So if you're watching this before Easter Sunday, hopefully you are. And if you don't want any spoiler alerts, because you're going to wait to watch it again on Easter Sunday, maybe, then push the pause button after the questions and then watch it, pick it up again later. Or you can watch it as a family to better help you enter into this Easter Sunday. God bless y'all. Hey, St. Teresa Church, Father Larry here. This is Holy Week and Easter is upon us. From the 20th chapter of John, we hear the great story of the resurrection. Listen as we hear 
the word of God. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb and both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but didn't go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. But Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means my teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and what he told her. Some time ago, I was in a cemetery saying goodbye to the last mourner after a graveside service, and I noticed a young family nearby. They had come to pay respects to a family member, and I could hear the young mom explaining to her little ones that here was where grandma was buried and resting with Jesus. Well, they didn't seem impressed, and soon they were running around, and suddenly the youngest one pointed at a very large above-ground mausoleum, the kind that looks a little like a big stone house. And she said, look, and with a great big broad smile said, that must be where Jesus lives. Children are so logical. I mean, if grandma is resting here and she's with Jesus, then why not? Perhaps this child had caught a glimpse of the truth that's harder for the older ones among us to see. The hope of the resurrection is that the world is not just where Jesus died. This is the world where Jesus lives. And because Jesus lives, because God has broken the power of sin and death, we have been set free to live as well. And sometimes that's hard to accept and hard to believe, and never more so than now. The principalities and powers of evil, they appear to be in control. And some days it is hard to see with eyes of faith. That's why we need the church. So in those times when our sight is blinded by tears, we can hold on to one another's faith. That's why we need the meal that is called the Lord's Supper, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The sacraments might seem like child's play to the world, but to the casual observer, they may seem like nothing more than a token gesture. But when we look with the eyes of faith, when we listen with the ears of hope, in this broken bread, in this cup poured, we discover anew Mary's gospel. I have seen the Lord. In Holy Communion, we dare to imagine a different world. A world not imprisoned by the powers of sin and death, but set free set free for love, justice, and peace. Easter is a day to celebrate, to share the victory feast yet again, because we have been set free. So even though the tears may be streaming down many cheeks at the atrocities of the world, we can get up from the table, 
follow our leader, running through the cemeteries and streets, from the Capitol steps to the corporate boardroom and the back alleys, thumbing our noses at death, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Ark. On behalf of Father Moses and the entire staff of St. Teresa's Church, Happy Easter.